Okay, so the next topic we're going to discuss is an overview of the design of SSSD. Uh, what are its components and how do they fit together? And I'm going to attempt to draw this. This will be a poor attempt. But the SSSD, despite its name as the System Security Services Daemon, is actually a collection of services. Uh, it's a collection of, uh, of, of different processes that handle different uh, features. Um, we break these up into uh, concepts called uh, the monitor, which is a master, which is the master process that you actually launch that spawns all of the others. Uh, it, it keeps track of them, makes sure they stay alive, restarts them if they die. So we've got the monitor sitting here that, call, that starts everything else. Then we have res uh, we have what we call responders. These are the, these are the uh, processes that actually listen for requests from clients and answer those requests. Uh, they also manage uh, access to the cache. So we've got uh, in, the ba in, basic in our basic functionality we have two primary responders. We have the NSS responder and the PAM responder. Now, NSS uh, stands for Name Service Switch, um, and that basically means this is our identity lookup responder. If you ask for, if you ask uh, libc, uh, the C library on the system, for the user information or group information about this group name, this user ID, etc., you'll get a, it. will communicate to this responder. It will, uh, and uh, I should, before I get into that. The PAM responder deals with the pluggable authentication modules. Um, it's, this, it's authentication and authorization decisions all come through the PAM responder. So if you're trying to do a login, uh, you can issue requests here and get a reply from this. So behind that, or I should say underneath it, we have a memory mapped uh, cache called the LDB. It doesn't it, it, it doesn't really stand for anything. It's an LDAP-like database. It, uh, it, interactions with it are very similar to LDAP. However, they don't actually, uh, unlike LDAP, they don't uh, restrict schema. You can put anything at all into it, whereas LDAP has, well, L LDAP has a schema you have to preview, you have to set up ahead of time that such and such entries uh, contain such and such, uh, such, such and such attributes. And if you try to add ones that it doesn't know, or don't add any that it says are mandatory, then adding will fail and you'll get an error. LDB has no such functions. So both the NSS and PAM responders look to the cache uh, when, when appropriate. In the case of uh, name service switch and, and identity lookups, we will uh, generally always look to the cache first. And as long as the cache entry is valid, we'll return that. In the case of PAM, we actually do something a little bit differently. Uh, we, in order to ensure that authentication chain, the changes in the central server to perform authentication always happen immediately, we will always refresh the cache from the providers before we perform an authentication so that they always have the latest data. So now we've got uh, what we call data providers, uh, or sometimes we, we'll, we'll use the term, the term backend uh, interchangeably. And these are these are uh, processes that are configured to, uh, to talk to a specific uh, LDAP server and a specific or a specific Kerberos server or uh, in the not-too-distant future, a specific RADIUS server and perform, uh, and perform the actual identity lookups and or authentications as needed. They also, in the, in the case of NSS, what will happen is you'll ask the cache, is this, is this user in the cache? Uh, if they are and, they're and, they're, and the cache entry hasn't expired, 
they get the results back and continue on. If the cache entry is missing or expired, we will say, okay, I'm going to send a request to the held app provider that we've configured. I want you to update the cache for me. Uh, now this is actually a key point. We do not get data back on this communication. LDAP provider goes, it connects to the uh, network server, it updates the cache, and then return, and then just tells NSS, okay, everything is is solid. Every, you know, we, what is in the cache is now official. And if that means that the LDAP server didn't find it, the cache is still empty. Now NSS returns, we don't know it. Uh, but we all, but all data is returned through this communication. Uh, and this is done to, uh, to guarantee, at least partly for ourselves as engineers, to make sure that, the ca that we never get into a situation where the cache and the uh, responder are not in agreement. In the case of authentic uh, authentications, this is a bidirectional communication. Of course, really all you're getting back are success, failure, expired password. Uh, for the most part, and we'll, we'll touch on password changes a little bit later as well. So that's a bit more of a back and forth communication. So, and as I said, the monitor maintains every single one of these processes. Uh, it's they all they all fork from the monitor and are restarted if they die automatically. 